What's going on, everybody? My name is Tyler, and today is yet another preview for the Eastern Conference semifinals, or at least the semifinal rounds, conference semifinal rounds of the NBA playoffs. We know the two matchups in the Eastern Conference, the Boston Celtics and the Toronto Raptors. The link to that video will be in the description of this video, so if you want to watch that, get your previews. And then we all, yesterday it found out, we found out, excuse me, that it'll be the Milwaukee Bucks, the number one overall seed in the entire NBA playoffs, versus the Miami Heat. So should be fairly interesting series. That series kicks off today, Monday, August 31st, the last day of August. So I guess a good way to close out the month. Let's look at the Bucks first. The first round, they they won in five games against the Orlando Magic, losing game one, 122 to 110. I think that really put them on notice. There was a lot of uh, fear that maybe the Magic could actually make this a series. And then the Bucks handled business in the last four games. 111 to 96 in game two, 121 to 107 in game three, 121 to 106 in game four. And then the on yes on Saturday, 118 to 104, closing out the series after delaying this after delaying that closeout game twice. Because if you remember the Bucks, they were supposed to play their game five their game five of that series on Wednesday the 26th. Then they protested following, in response to the Jacob Blake shooting in Kenosha, Wisconsin. They boycotted the game, starting a ripple effect across the sports landscape. Kudos to them, by the way, for taking a stand in this. But that postponed this game five. And I was a little concerned at first that I thought maybe this could be a distraction for this team. I think it's only brought them together because now they're like, we got something to play for in our home state in Wisconsin to show like this. we are Wisconsin strong, basically. For that, uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo, utter, like, he was great that entire series. 31 points in game one, 28 in game two, 35 game three, 31 game four, 28 game five. Those are just points. Then you get to his rebound numbers 17 rebounds in game one, 20 rebounds in game two, 11 in game three, 15 in game four, and 17 in game five. The guy is a, insane, to say the least. He is such a good basketball player, and he is a tr- like, he's going to be a terror in the league. Like, he's just won his second – his that's not second. He just won his Defensive Player of the Year for the first time and well-deserved. Probably going to win the second MVP of his career back-to-back. So, really, really good stuff, and I think he's only getting better. My thing with the Bucks and Giannis specifically, we saw it last year. He got to the Eastern Conference Finals and was just simply gassed. Didn't have anything left in the tank. Couldn't carry the Bucks any further, and the Raptors took advantage of that. It, and it didn't help that the Bucks players around him were not at their top level in terms of performance. They didn't show up in that Eastern Conference Finals. If the Bucks won't have any chance of making it to the fi- NBA Finals and winning a championship, the guys around Bucks, uh, onto the Kumbo, the Chris Middleton, the Brooke Lopez, the Eric Bledsoe, the Wesley Matthews, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, have to show up and perform. Not, I wouldn't say every single game, but they got to be able to be just at least tolerable, I guess, for lack of a better term, to just get, alleviate some of the pressure on Giannis. They say Giannis is not having a great game, or maybe he gets into a little bit of foul trouble because he averaged uh, close to four fouls a game in that series against the Magic. They just need to alleviate some of the pressure on him so that way it opens up the opportunities. Because if, say, Middleton and Bledsoe and all those guys aren't knocking down three-point shots, defenses, especially this Heat defense with a lot of their wings, can just key in on Giannis and it would just make it very difficult. That was the success the Heat had in their three matchups this season with the My, uh, the Miami, uh, with the Milwaukee Bucks. Got my words twisted up there. They won their first matchup back in October, 131 to 126 in overtime. Then they won their second matchup back in March, 105 to 89. It was a phenomenal game by the Heat standards. And then they lost in the bubble, 130 to 116. I would not be surprised if that was more of the similar game we see um, in this series, given the fact that here we are now in August and a lot has changed since their October and March matchups. But looking at that uh, bu- matchup in the bubble between these two teams, Giannis was in, was really good. 33 points, 13 of 17 from the field, 7 of 9 from free throw line. and But the Bucks were able to slow down some of the Heat's key guys. Duncan Robinson led the team in scoring with 21. Tyler Hero came off the bench with 20, but... Jimmy Butler didn't play in that game. Uh, yeah, didn't play. Bam Adebayo had just six points in 22 minutes. Kendrick Nunn had 14 points. It, it wasn't the best Miami Heat team, but the Bucs were able to slow them down. And then Giannis and Middleton had 33 each. So 
that could be something to watch out there. The thing that I think for the Bucks, outside of Giannis being really well, it's who's I mentioned it before. Like who they, they surround the supporting cast has got to step up. The one guy who I think has to step up the most is Chris Middleton. He was I would not say he was all star level. He had a PER of around six, six for an all star in four in five games in the playoffs. Not gonna get it done if the Bucks want to advance. The Heat, the team that I think could really give the Bucks some trouble, and if they can do that, I wouldn't be surprised if Giannis starts considering looking elsewhere, maybe to Miami for the uh, second round. Shifting gears to the Heat, or excuse me, Bucks, uh, Giannis leaving for Miami in free agency, but that's a different video for another day. Looking at Miami, though, in their first round against the Indiana Pacers, I mean, it was just a phenomenal performance on their end. 4-0 sweep. I get it. The Pacers were undermanned. They didn't have Vic, a fully healthy Victor Oladipo or DeMontis Sabonis, but the Heat. 113-101 in their first game. 109-100 game two. 124-115 game three. 99-87 in game four. The Heat were just flat out dominant, like I mentioned. Goran Dragic leading the team in scoring with 22.8 points. Then you have Jimmy Butler at 19.8. He's probably got to step it up a little bit. Personally, if he wants, if the uh, the Heat really want to have a chance against the Milwaukee Bucks, because just you need to be able to got to put points up on this team because they could run it up. The Bucks can. Bam Adebayo though, a very uh, he is by far away the leading candidate for most improved player in my opinion. He was an All Star this year, 15 points per game in the first round, 11.2 rebounds, 5.2 assists. The 11.2 rebounds and the 5.2 assists led the team. For the first round. Very remarkable numbers for a guy of his size. And he had an 18.26 PER. So very efficient all the way around. And that's the thing. Bam Adebayo, he's probably the guy that guards Giannis the most. Just because of the size matchup at six foot nine. At Bam Adebayo has a lot of size and strength to match that of Antetokounmpo. But the Heat have a lot of guys they could throw at Giannis. They could throw Bam. They could throw Andre Godala. You can maybe throw Jimmy Butler because he just has that tenacity. Solomon Hill, Jay Crowder. If you want to go a little bit bigger, you can get a Myers Leonard or a Kelly Olynyk type in there. The Heat are extremely deep at the bigs position, small forward, power forward, and that could really slow down Giannis. If the Heat get forced into a matchup where Giannis can go up against a Kendrick Nunn or a Goran Dragic or a Tyler Hero, it's going to be a little bit tougher for them. But if the Heat can just get the matchup they want and force whoever they want on Giannis, I think they have a very good chance of winning this series. Another thing that you got to watch out for is just the Heat have had a long time off. They've had over a week, and that could be a good thing or a bad thing. They were, you know, they were in a roll, to be totally honest. They were on a roll um, in that first round, obviously sweeping the Pacers. Having this extra time off, that could hurt them, possibly, because they've had – the, you get out of that rhythm, where the, whereas the Bucks they'll go in, they'll have a day off on Sunday, go into Monday, or today, I should say, and be fre- fresher than Miami. One other thing I think you got to watch out for outside of the, just the matchups in general is, like I mentioned, Jimmy Butler, guy is the go-to guy on this team for Miami, and then you got Chris Middleton, the number two guy. Both of these players will have to really step up to give their teams a chance Butler, we've seen it all season long. He played well in the first round. Middleton, not as much. But outside of Giannis, who we know is the best player, it's going to be who has the second best, the second best, the third best, the fourth, the fifth, whatever, in the series. Because Giannis is obviously going to do Giannis things. It's whoever has the more balanced roster. And I, right now, I give that edge to the Heat. Then you got the coaching matchup. Eric Spolstra, one of the best defensive-minded coaches the league has ever seen, versus Mike Budenholzer, who has... Taking the Spurs type offense, we, like we've seen, he took it to Atlanta and then he's brought it to Milwaukee and he's gotten the best out of his team, as we've seen back to back seasons. Ultimately, I think the prediction, I've been flip flopping here because obviously the Bucks they have Giannis, they're really good, but the Heat, there's just something about this team that makes me just go gaga over them. Like my, I, whenever they're on, I just am glued to the TV because there's a certain style of play that they play with that is so, like, it's just, I really enjoy watching it. So that's why, and I think the Heat, they have the best matchup for Giannis out of any of the three remaining teams 
in the Eastern Conference between Miami, Boston, and Toronto. So I think the Heat are actually going to pull off the upset here. I, I know it's probably an unpopular opinion. I'm actually going to say the Heat win in six games. Right. So not only they're going to beat the Bucks, they're going to beat them in six games. And this could be very crucial for the future of the Bucks franchise and the Heat franchise. The Heat, they get a lot of more experience. They might get a bigger name free agent saying, this team's got a winning culture. I'm going to go there. And the Bucks, you got Giannis, who has a free agency in 2021, who start my thinking, maybe I can't win in Milwaukee. And he starts reconsidering his options, maybe not signing a Supermax this offseason. But let me know what y'all think down below in the comment section. Do the Heat pull out the upset, or, or am I just crazy and the Bucks are going to make it to the NBA or Eastern Conference Finals and then the NBA Finals? Uh, I appreciate y'all so much for watching. Uh, if you have any other suggestions or thoughts or opinions, please leave them down in the comments. I love reading them. I, get, I know there aren't a whole lot of comments on my videos, but I love reading them when they come in. Have a great day. We'll see you next time, hopefully sooner rather than later, with my Western Conference Series previews for the conference semifinals. Have a great